Hey guys, I'm Craig and welcome to yet another Server Factory video. We thought it would be useful for you guys if we started a series sharing tips on how to properly maintain your Supermicro server. Today we will be walking you through how to update the IPMI firmware on your Supermicro system. Keeping your IPMI firmware up to date is important for making sure all of the IPMI features continue to work smoothly as well as keeping your server secure. The first step is to check your IPMI firmware version, which can be easily done in BIOS by going to the IPMI and checking the BMC firmware revision. Once you know the firmware revision that your system is running, check what the latest available version is by going on Supermicro's website and searching for the motherboard you're using. The name of your motherboard will be in the BIOS in the main tab. On the motherboard's webpage, under the links and resources section, click on the BMC slash IPMI firmware. This will show you what the latest available revision is and also provide a link to download the zip folder with all the resources you need. If your IPMI needs updating, download the zip folder and extract the file somewhere on your computer that you'll be able to come back to. By far the easiest way to update IPMI is to do it remotely. To do this, you will need to make sure your server is connected to power and that the IPMI management port is connected. Next, you need to find the station IP address of the server, which can be found in BIOS by going to the IPMI tab and selecting BMC network configuration. The station IP address is shown here and should look something like this. If the station IP is just a bunch of zeros, you need to make sure that the IPMI port is connected properly, restart the system and try again. Once you have the station IP, get back on your computer and just type in the IP into your browser's address bar. But note that the server and the computer you're going to be updating from must be connected to the same network. Your browser will probably tell you that the connection is not secure and it needs your authorization to continue. Trust us, this is fine. Just authorize the connection and you should see a login page like this. The default username and password is just admin in all caps. Once you've logged in, you'll see a screen like this. Next, hover over the maintenance tab, click firmware update and select enter update mode. Next, find the files you extracted earlier and upload the file with the .bin extension when prompted to do so. Be sure to check all of the boxes that show up as well. Do preserve certificates, settings and all that good stuff. Now that you just start the update and wait a few minutes for it to be done, the system's IPMI operates completely separately from the other subsystems. So while the IPMI is updating, you can still perform other tasks such as update BIOS on the server. Just make sure that the power and IPMI ports stay connected. Once the update reaches 100%, a pop-up will appear telling you that the system is rebooting. Once the system is all done, you should be redirected back to the IPMI login page, which means that the update was successful. Now, if you reboot the server and go back into the IPMI tab in BIOS, it should now show the updated firmware version. The IPMI firmware can also be updated manually via a flash USB, in case you don't have the means to access the system remotely. You will need an MS-DOS bootable USB drive, which you can create using a formatting tool such as Rufus. On the bootable USB, create a folder which will be used to contain the update files. Now, locate and transfer the AD update file and the .bin file you extracted earlier into the folder created on the DOS USB. The AD update file should be in a subfolder named DOS. Next, plug the USB drive into any USB port on the server and boot to the device. The system should boot to the USB automatically as long as no other boot drives are connected. If not, then go to the BIOS and change the system's boot mode to legacy. Once booted to the USB, you should be greeted by the DOS command prompt. Now, you just need to navigate to the folder where you put the update files. Once there, input this command. The update will begin and should be done in a few minutes. Note that if you're using this method, you won't be able to perform any other functions while the IPMI is updating, unlike with the previous method. Once the update is done, you can reboot the system and check that the IPMI version has been updated in the BIOS. We hope that you enjoyed this how-to video and maybe you learned something. If you did, then leave us a like. If you have any suggestions for future how-to videos, leave your ideas in the comments section below. See you next time.